dear Dhamma friends, today we have slightly changed our daily schedule. What is the, we are going to have a, to this Dhamma talk little advice. So to start the Dhamma talk, everyone may give the concept with three types. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Mutasse Bhagavatu Arahatu Sangha Sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato sanna sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato sanna sambuddhasse Katama cha bhikkave sanya chaime bhikkave sanya kaya Rupa sanya, sadda sanya, ganda sanya, rasa sanya, puttabha sanya Dhamma sanya ayam gujjati bhikkave sanya titi. Dhamma yeah. friends, uh, according to the particular discourse we have selected as the main topic, namely the Upadana Parivarta Sutta, today we are going to take the, another um, agglomeration or aggregates uh, which is subjected to get attached that is called uh, sanya skanda or the aggregates of perception and which is being discussed uh, after the uh, handling this uh, form or materiality and then the uh, feelings. That means that uh, the sanya, the perception, the cognition and the recognition, uh, reification is uh, somewhat subtler than the uh, materiality and the feelings. So once uh, someone comes to know, uh, specifically in the pragmatic sense, with the, towards the materiality and the feelings, he or she becomes somewhat qualified to go in deep uh, layers, something like perception. Uh, Even in the meditation, they are very advanced stages, but uh, even those who have not uh, reached these kind of deep layers of uh, inside meditation, we can have access to this subject still in the two cross ways. One thing is that the book knowledge, the, what the, the Buddha given as the theoretical uh, explanation, and the second thing is uh, rationalization or deductive way. So, as I have mentioned earlier, if someone to go really uh, wholeheartedly into the practice, he or she must, would, she would have gone through these stages, namely understanding or getting the theory knowledge first and then deduce it or rationalize it. If uh, feel it is uh, worthwhile, then only the that is your faith come into being and put into practice going to happen. So therefore, even those who have not reached it, uh, we have the access to this uh, theory knowledge and the uh, deductive knowledge. As far as the theory side is concerned, the sanya is kind of a labeling or putting a sign or putting a mark. In the cognitive series, uh, whenever eye or ear or nose or tongue or the body <coughs> or the mind going to interact with external impingement whenever these two going to come each other is the mind also going to take this seriously not uh, going otherwise otherworldly and if mind also they are whenever these three aspects are uh, coining each other, that's what we call the contact. This a must for any uh, phenomena to take place. If the visual uh, or vision or visual phenomena to take place, there should have a visual object and a sensitive eye or eye sensitivity and the mind must be occupied or mind must be given the full consent to see when these three come in together, if it is continue to happen, this uh, see contact going to happen. Once the contact happens only, 
the feeling going to happen with the, the particular thing. So is pleasurable or unpleasurable. So whenever seeing happens, the second thought moment, uh, he or she going to have is feeling. Once this feeling happens, young Vedeti Tang Sanjanati, that is the what we are going to put the sign, put the mark in order to refine, in order to uh, cognize it or sometimes to recognize it. So therefore, by the time the cognitive series is fairly mature, first the attack happens and then the feeling going to happen. If you feel that is something worthwhile, that you have seen a pleasurable thing and it is going to give a more pleasure inside to come, then you put a mark there. Or if something is unpleasurable and it will be dangerous and it, it is something threatening you, there also you put a mark there. If there is no such a, uh, remarkable, pleasurable or painful thing, uh, that, be, that go without mark. That never go into your memory. So it become it, it will not become a case. It will not become a phenomena. It will not become your experience. It will not, it will not go uh, recording into your memory. It goes off. So whatever may be decided as either substantially pleasurable or painful, those are the things we are. Uh, the, those are the things that much mind is naturally go and take account of. In order to keep the bookkeeping, you put the mark. So that when the same thing happens for the second time, when you are recognizing that very pleasurable or painful feeling is almost associating that, together with the recognition, you recognize this as a pleasurable thing according to the last cognition. When you are recognizing, that pressure, pleasurable background or underlying tendencies they are, whenever you are to recognize it is uh, sometimes as a unpleasurable. So therefore, uh, some, if something to happen again, reiterate, the Sanya has a fairly uh, remarkable role in recognizing and cognizing and recognizing. So therefore, whenever something happens, the apprehension or, or, or going to uh, feel pleasure or pain uh, is the first thing. When that happens only, reification happens to whether it is worthwhile to keep in your, your memory, go into the hard disk, go into the software. And if it is necessary, it will put a real uh, the good marking. And uh, if it is not necessary, also if it is threatening, there is also go into the marking. And next time you are never recognize the object by itself, you recognize it by your own markings. So therefore, then onward you are not observing the object, but you object observe your own markings. Example given is whenever a carpenter is. Uh, organizing his uh, workshop and uh, getting some wood and going to put up, a, going to make a, a chair, uh, he get the model into his mind and then he put some markings on the wood and uh, after getting that he, he need not know any about the model and once you cut the wood and plane it and polish it and fix it, the model going to happen. So throughout he is not associating the model, he is just going by his own markings. And that is exactly happening when you are tailoring a piece of cloth or a garment, uh, you put markings and then uh, for the fit on only, you need the person again to see whether it is fitting till that your markings are enough. So likewise, the, throughout our experience, uh, we are accumulating so much of this kind of signs, this kind of marks, it is called sometimes labeling or naughty. So, <coughs> younger people, 
they don't have marking system. So therefore, they are not accumulating any kind of a desire or hatred. So they get it, but when the, the brain becomes mature enough for the natural selection, they accumulate some kind of a fear or some kind of a desire. So that marking system only we are going to give a full coloration and full diversification by what we call teaching, what we call by education system. And ultimately, uh, by handling these marks and signs, you can completely send the person mad or you can send the person completely the arantic. Not by changing the word. Because he is onward, after he accumulated a certain amount of signs, he is completely living in this dream world. He is by manipulating, by handling, by calculating, by philosophizing. For everything, what is coming up is not the real thing, your own marking. So on that only, they are keep on dreaming, calculating, synthesizing, planning, Everything happening in the marks on this label. So therefore it is a uh, very significant uh, step in thought process. And once that young uh, Sanjanati, Tangvitakiti, once you put a mark, you, you understand this is something valuable or it is desirable or undesirable, upon them only, only upon them you keep on prolifying. Whatever you don't feel not important and not put the mark, never go into your thinking patterns or in uh, calculations or hypothesizing, philosophizing. Only you have selected and put marks are the thing going to go for further calculation in the mind. So then onward, and these things ultimately uh, overwhelming you, inundate you, thinking this is the reality. Of course, you are not taking the everything that you are seeing, hearing as markings. You take only the desirable and undesirable thing. And when you are thinking, when you are proliferating, when you are calculating, you are taking only the marks that you have put and take it as the reality. And then you, know, you are keep on calculating. Ultimately, when you are going to put into the world, in the practice, it won't work. Because you are thinking this as the reality, but it is not the reality, it is just marks. Just inputs, <coughs> just signals. So this is how the present day education and the, all the information technology, the communication, everything is going. It appears like something a vacuum, something lacking. But the media people and the advertisers, advertisers, they are really, really making use of this vacuum. They know how to send the people mad. As if thing is real, they can under, they can show you by making use of this gap. And the present day we call we are in a civilization known as information technology. Anything possible. Anything possible, therefore, the, uh, the trustability and the dependability of the each other has gone to the zero level. You don't know what is the truth, what is the non truth. That is because this sanya, the, at the beginning, the reality, you take it as a concept. So, in order to take your memory prepared, putting aside. Or putting a label. And ultimately that label you take it as a reality upon which, which only you are calculating. So therefore you are living in your own dream world. Each one is living in their own dream world. They are living on their own perception. So whenever something goes wrong in this perception, we call person has gone mad. He is insane. So the mad person will say all the others are mad. Because he can see his rationality, why he is behaving like that. But the other people, those who are considering all these signs are reality, they find that the mad person is completely abnormal. So we put him into the asylum 
and put label to Mathemat. And whenever, if he or she is going to talk, they will understand who the hell the other math people have the chance to label me as man. Because everyone is man. Everyone is in the, in the uh, kind of a neurotic situation. But majority get together one person and say you are mad because your sanya is gone little upset. Why is circuit system has gone little upset? And they know not what he's doing and talking and everything. Well, consistency is no more. So they are sitting mad. But the Buddha says, Sabde Bhutu Jana Umat. Each and every worlding is mad because they are believing their own uh, the science. Their own value system. Their own perception. Their own cognition. So how and why we must understand it. Why should go into that? And uh, because otherwise the, you are living in your own cage, your own dream world, your own value system. So very whatever that you are talking about is based upon your value system, but you don't know the other person is in a completely different value system. Whatever the talking going to happen, no communication happens. Because there are two, two worlds. Because he or she is brought up in a completely different cultural background and you are from different but upon they are, both of them are talking about their own labels and the uh, signs and the marks. So therefore when you are talking you can listen how much the in communication if he wants to be a good rhetoric, just listen to the people talking. They are talking nonsense. All the so-called uh, serious people are the most serious idiots. They are talking nonsense. They don't know each other. They don't respect each other. They have no patience to listen to others. They keep on selling their ideas. You would have heard about the Gandhi who has been a very famous character in India. He used to be a very shy boy. And uh, his house was a very famous place. His parents are politicians, so all the big shots are going to come to his house. And they are talking about uh, very serious issues. They are ultimately going to be a constitutional value in the parliament also, because they are going to have informal talks at home. So he used to listen to them uh, behind the screen. Ultimately came, you no, know, they are talking completely nonsense. And he was shocked to talk even so long time, he has never talked. Because all the people are talking to prove their own value system, the reality is completely lost. It doesn't matter. As far as you are going to prove your uh, labels, your labelings, your value system, and then you feel proud, your ego is really putting up on the pedestal and whitewashed. But the reality is completely out. Ultimately, Gandhi came to know how to talk to short to the point. That is how he became the world leader. He mastered it because he saw that when the people are talking, they are selling their idea, they are selling their ego, they are selling their likings and disliking rather than referring to the reality. So whenever you meditate further and further, you understand this talking is a utter wastage. Not only the time, not only the energy, it is created so much of repercussions because never communication takes place. We are just chattering. And that chatter is come back in the inner chatter, ultimately it agitates yourself unwantedly and whatever the mindfulness, whatever the concentration, whatever the faith, whatever the energy you have, all the energies within the mind is interacting each other, the split mind, deranged mind is the matter. No communication takes place. So therefore, once you come up to this meditation, uh, passing the Vedana Nupasana, you come to this uh, area uh, exposing yourself for this Sanya. 
let me explain from that from the Anapanasati Sutta. So far we have talked about the Anapanasati Sutta, early part of the four tetra uh, regarding the four main forms of materiality or corporeality. There you are calming down your breath body. That whatever the object you are going to represent the being, rising and falling, or the in breath and out breath, or sometimes the walking meditation, or whatever you do in the day to day activities, if you are doing very mindfully and uh, naturally, you so on. There is no danger, there is no rush. You can do it in a very calm and peaceful manner. So when that happens, that representing sitting as if that your breath becomes very subtle. So what you have to do is facilitate it and let the body to settle down with the, that amount of breath without uh, agitating it. And when you go there, the moment you are going to find the equilibrium, the stability at that stage, then Piti Parishanvedi, you first time you are going to feel the rapture. And even then the Buddha says, don't let the mind be carried away by this rapture or the pleasure. Uh, be uh, mindful with your brain. Piti Parishanvedi, Asasi Samit Sikati, even if you feel the, the gladness, don't take it as a primary object. You be try to be try to be as much as possible with your the pitchy reality or your breath, even if it is very subtle. Even the pressure is going to happen. And when that happens, now the Buddha is presenting Chitta Padisangvedi, Chitta Sankara Padisangvedi, Asasi Samiti Sikati, Chitta Sankara Padisangvedi, Asasi Samiti Sikati. So that the technical term Chitta Sankara is the uh, mental uh, representative, representation and uh, in the Chula Veda Allah Sutta the sister Dhammadina is explaining Chitta Sankara means Sanya Veda Chitta Sankara the, the, the bare minimum datum line of the mind or mental functions or mental factors is represented by the uh, feelings and the perception Upon that, only only other proliferation is going to take place. All the other mental factors are going. Without feeling and perception, no mental functions. It's a bare minimum, the slow run of the machine. So, once the PT sukha, or the gladness and the, play, uh, the happiness being tackled, you are exposing for the first time to the mental functions or bare minimum of the mental, that means you are calming down the mental function to the bare minimum, you can touch the rock bottom. There you find the feelings and the perception. And in order to come up to that level, you must not entertain the pleasurable feelings or painful feelings. Whenever they are happening, you disclaim them and come back to the no pain, no pleasure situation. Ultimately, mind goes to the situation whereby you can't perceive as if you can't at least explain it because it is a very subtle layer. So that is the point you are going to understand, or oh, that is the only possible point where you can understand how this the perception is working. As far as the gross pressure and the gross pain is there. The labeling technique and reification and recognition, recognition and chattering and going on happens. But more and more you are to uh, disclaim this uh, high pleasurable feeling or painful feeling instead go back to the no pain, no pleasure. The situation becomes the value of this uh, science, the value of this labeling becomes immaterial. Not necessary because you are not going to uh, going to uh, you are not chasing this mental state with the desire or hatred because you are not entertaining much of the hatred and the desire you are uh, going to the equilibrium point 
when the calmness happens, never doubt yourself, never going to go uh, fall into sleep, never let forced breathing going to happen, never open your eyes, never you get up and go, instead you calm down. When that happens only, you can understand, you come to a situation whereby perception becomes the bare minimum, so much so, you feel you can't remember that. You can't recognize that. You can't explain that to other people. So this is a kind of a uncertainty, kind of a threat, kind of a losing the boundaries, kind of a cornering. You feel like as if you are going insane. Or sometimes you feel like falling to sleep. Or sometimes you feel the situation going beyond your control. Because throughout the samsara, or throughout our the journey, we were so busy in recognizing each and every mental state, uh, cognizing at least, and then so I had to recognize. But when you come up to this level, this cognition, recognition all loses its power, and therefore you feel like lost. So in the commentary it says, in the early days, whenever the uh, one person to go to the sea with a small vessel, the moment they are going to lose the sight of the dry land, the situation becomes panic. They don't know where to go and what to do. So therefore, very expert people, uh, they have different methods by looking at the stars or looking by at the moon or the sun. They understand and keep the orientation to the show where they left, but that is not their destiny. Their destiny is something else maybe. So therefore, whatever maybe they have to take the orientation from the seashore they left and navigate to go to the other sea. So therefore, within that area, each and every name, uh, the uh, soldier do not know. Now, only the chiefman person knows, even if that is going to lost, uh, that is a very dangerous risky. Exactly the thing when you are going into a desert. Because right now you have the same scenery, you have no landmarks. And yes, exactly the same when you go into the deep forest. You don't know how to come back because when you go into the forest, there is a kind of a mental atmosphere. Your directions are lost. When you go into the busy street in America, also the same. <coughs> you don't know unless otherwise you have a navigator. You don't know where to go and what to do. If you ask even, they don't know. This is a concrete forest. Exactly the same. So under such circumstances, if you have no uh, orientation, point to cognize, you feel lost. It is therefore in the meditation also. This is after you mastering the, the feelings go into this situation. So in order to, this is a must, this is happening, this is natural thing. In order to uh, reduce the amount of panic, uncertainty, the master says, the old technique where the people, when they are going into the forest, what they do is, they are chopping the trees the way they are going throughout, so therefore they can understand the landmarks to come back to the village. Exactly the way, when in the meditation, if you are going to go that kind of a uh, tree wage, where you don't know, you, are, you can't comprehend, where you can't perceive it, uh, that is a good sign though, you can feel like lost. Next time when you are going to sit, right from the beginning of your primary object, keep on nodding. In breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, whatever the, the sound, the pain, the thoughts, like negative things, or the pleasure, or lightness, or light feeling, whatever happens, if you keep the track with the primary object, with or without labeling, so that is the, how you can earn the orientation. So at a time, the labeling, physically, physical labeling drops, 
but even you can keep the track with the breath so there you can understand more and more you go to the subtlety of the breath that not only the formal form not only the material not only the, the physical body or kayana prasana advancing but after a certain level the vedana prasana going to take its alter and soon after the sanya the perception also going to work whereby you are advancing more and more you advance you go to the more and more subtle state whereby you can explain it but still the our lokahamdro our teacher when he said pretty he says if you are leading or reaching that kind of state next day you have to go prepared with different methods one thing is start right from the beginning and keep the label and keep the track with the primary object as long as possible the second thing is when you go nearing this perceivability and perceivability level have a full fledged mindfulness and preparedness now we are going to go to a area which is unknown yesterday and today you are going to little further and come back tomorrow go little still further and come back likewise when you are throwing further in you can increase the area you can increase the determination power you can increase the the mental power you can increase the concentration you can increase the mindfulness so therefore the labeling technique is very important so if we come back to the the mindfulness itself later commentators they gave the natural character of the mindfulness its function its proximate factor and uh, the its manifestation this is how they are limited they are they are given to give the theoretical delimitation of the particular mental aspect or uh, physical aspect uh, this is not really or not well recognized in the early thoughts of buddhism but later in the uh, later commentary exegesis each and every mental factor or physical factor they have given the uh, the character intrinsic character its function its manifestation and its proximate cause as far as the mindfulness is concerned its character is known as non superficiality is the character whenever there is no mind the mindfulness mind is just uh, wobbling over the object never go penetrating into the object for example uh, some people i have already met they are meditating <coughs> maybe 16 17 years still they practice the anapanasati if you ask them can you experience the in breath versus out breath they never do they do they can't give their answer this is we are practicing regularly practicing anapanasati is the meditation we do walking meditation also but if you ask a specific question can you understand anapa when the mind is with the breath it is not in thought not in a pain not in the sounds no they don't know and still if you ask can you discriminate this is in breath this is out breath no so they have whatever they are going through they are superficial never penetrate if you are to promote this inside meditation then if you have to go for inquiring mind and inquiring thoughts investigation so for investigation this penetration is necessary so mindfulness is defined as a mental factor is penetrating penetrating means at the beginning you try to keep the object just face to face but whenever that is being confirmed you never be happy with that you go more closer more immediate more uh, detail penetrating so this is the character of the mindfulness but whenever that is happening the when there is the character of non superficiality going to happen the function of the mindfulness is it will make sure if you are observing the object very closely next moment also the object will be assured next thought moment also will be assured that means less and less distraction more and more you associate the object 
in a penetrative manner, it is going to be with the face-to-face -face loader. If we are vision superficial, all the other distractions come and distort, uh, distract you, so therefore no conformity. When you the mindfulness come into being, you get the kind of uh, assurance, now for another 10 breaths, or 10 minutes, or 10 seconds, I can be with the breath. So that is the function, that is the mindfulness going to help you, so this function. And then the manifestation is, you feel secure. You know now I can predictably be with the primary object. Even the outside sounds are there, even the pains are there, even the thoughts are there. Still I can have the direct uh, connection with the object. So you feel kind of a security as if you are going out but still you have your cell phone. As and when necessary you can call back home and get the direction. So therefore the connection is established. So like the mother and the, the fetus, the navel connection is there. So like I mean the mindfulness is going to happen, your manifestation is you get the security. And uh, what is the proximate factor for the mindfulness to establish is this perception. If you have the direct perception, as to this is what you are associating for the moment that will confirm the mindfulness, establish mindfulness, the steadfast mindfulness is going to happen. That is why the Burmese masters came out with this naughty, the labor day. If you are if your mind is bewildering, running up and down, thinking, pain, sounds, and once in the way the rising and falling or in breath and out breath. If you wish to keep this steadfast, what you have to do, not in breath as in breath and out breath as out breath. Or you can increase the number of nodings if the distractive factors are more forceful, in, 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 out, 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 in, 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 out, out, out. Or otherwise, as we discuss in the discussion, we can keep on noting with counting, in, out, one in, out, to, is all called fixing of the perception. So therefore you are sure the mind is shoot or uh, directed, raised to that particular object because you are labeling. So that is how this uh, perception is you are going to use it. So at the beginning you are of course using the perception. That is the way we our mind has rational mind is working. So when you keep on noting, it's a very strange thing going to happen. That is to say, you in, the in breath happens, you notice an in breath, out breath has happened, in breath, out breath. So when certain amount of subtlety going to set in, it is natural to see the discrimination between the in breath and out breath is disappearing. Instead, the common characters for the in breath as well as for the out breath going to become maximalist. So individual characters fading off more and more the individual character fading off the common character going to manifest, going to become more prominent. When that happens the labeling is becoming immaterial. It becomes invalid because in the in breath and out breath both you are going to see kind of a vibration or kind of a movement or kind of a lightness. So then what to note? You can't discriminate in with them. They are the perception, the labeling is naturally dropping. Just like when the fruit is ripened and it is going to fall down, naturally the shear layer coming to being and drops. Likewise when that, when that happens, if you are still going to force with breathing, uh, sorry, labeling, that is the way you may disturb in the Mindfulness. So when you have the mindfulness catching like that, if the labeling is dropping, let it drop, still keep the face to face with the primary object. So this, when that happens, the slowly, slowly the form, the materiality become mastered and you can understand the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the rapture, the pressure and all the kind. Even then when you not falling into trap, which you can navigate further, then you come to understand you are facing such a situation, just the mind. 
You can't see, you can't feel your body. That means the internal, external boundaries gone. You are not worried about the pleasure and the pain. You are uh, much more with the no pain, no pleasure. And that is the point, the perception going to understand kind of a situation, it can't remember the situation. As if you are falling into sleep. Or as if you are not meditator right? Meditation is gone. So many understand, many misunderstand sometimes thinking this is the lack of mindfulness or lack of concentration or lack of control. So we can't be with it. That is because so much in the samsara, we have been in the uh, labeling everything we are getting, but here labels are not going to, uh, how can I say, effective. But this is a very good state where for the first time you are pasambayam chitta sankara nasasi samiti sikkati. First you are going to understand the function of the perception and it is also slowly slowly dropping and they are without entertaining doubts, without asking questions what to do the next, you have to seasoning. Seasoning, seasoning what happens is the agitation coming out of your mind due to lack of perception itself is settled down. This agitation is coming out of a fear due to the losing of your ego the losing of your the conceit. So you have to pass the little by little. The more and more you go settle down, accept it as a yet another equilibrium and there you can understand kind of uh, perception. The Buddha explained uh, in the Kalavivada Sutta na sanya sanyi na visanya sanyi no pi asanji na vibhuta sanji. That perception over there, if you can be enlightened into that perception, it is very difficult to define. That is not the sanya sanji, not the normal way of sanya. You can understand this is male or female. You can understand this mental state as good or bad. You can understand this mental state as an achievement or lost. Not the normal way of. Na visanya sanji, you are not fainted also. No pi asanji, you are not going to the sixth or seventh jhana where asanya tala or nivasanya anasanya atana kind of a, a mental absorption also not there. No we both asanji, you can't deny that there is no sanya also, but this particular sanya is not in your list. It's a completely new sanya. When that happens, na sanya sanji, no visanya sanji, no pia sanji, no vibhuta sanji, evan samitasa vibhuti rupa. When you are observing, when you are monitoring, when you are balancing the mind, you are completely dissolving the matter. You are completely mastering the materiality, the form. Still there are lingering ends, so they are only, you are not worried with the matter is they are or not. You are not adding any agitation, no turmoil, you are balancing yourself and that is how the, the you can go into the very subtle layers that answer to the given as an answer to a question. Uh, one particular person come and ask Katam Samaya Tassa Vibhuti Rupa Oh dear venerable sir, when someone is meditating or behaving or acting under which way one can go into the deepest layer or uh, the settling down and the subtlety of the materiality or we are wearing and tearing of the materiality. If you wish to go to the deepest layer of the materiality, how should you discipline yourself? Then the Buddha says, you have to discipline the perception in such a way it must not be your superficial day-to-day -day perception. You must not be falling into uh, sleepiness or uh, unconscious faint situation. You must not be in the deep absorption also. And you must not uh, rush to say there is no 
perception. There is a subtle way the perception. When you are observing that perception and when you become enlightened into that perception, you can see you are completely free from material. You are never get attracted to or a shape or a manner. No gravity can work. So you can see whole world is mind made. Mind is the forerunner. Mind is the most most important and whole world is made out of mind. Because the material for the moment you have said goodbye to that. And the same question is asking the, how one can get rid of this the duality of the pain and pressure in the feelings. It's the same question. So both the answer is the same. If you wish to see the most subtlest absence of materiality and if you wish to see go beyond the duality of the pain and the pleasure that is the point where you come to a you are coming and reaching a kind of a perception that very difficult to define but the thing is when that happens you start to feel nauseating you start to feel sweating you start to feel moving you start to feel something going wrong. So therefore you are the very person. If you go unprepared, disturb it then. But again, it's a very uh, interesting thing. No one will go without reaction at that time. Because we are so much in a rut and hooked up with this perception. Whenever the perception becomes settled down and when you go to become healed, become natural, we are the very person reacting. Because throughout we have been so associated with the sick perception, the biased perception or paralyzed kind of perception, thinking this is my dream, this is my liking and this this is my value system, this is my personality, don't come and touch it to fork into fingers to my psychology, this is my privilege, this is my human rights, this is what we were preserving. What in the meditation, when you are going into the Vipassana meditation, for the first time you are going to say, yes, that is true as far the convention is concerned. But if you wish to go to the absolutes, to understand there is a huge balance, and stable, normal kind of a perception, unless otherwise you give up. Your personal liking and disliking, your personal value system, personality, you will never, never go into that, the universal kind of perception. Unless you go there, you are, you are uh, change over from the conventional truth to the absolute truth is very difficult. So therefore, absolute truth you call ineffable. Whatever you can put into the Words is not the absolute truth. So therefore when the Zen masters define the Tao, Tao is a disease, whatever the Tao you can communicable is not eternal Tao. The Buddha is coming from the Tathata in the Theravada tradition. Tathata is suchness. When you go into the suchness, you can't define with other terms. Suchness is not yours. Suchness is shared with all the meditating and non-meditating, male, female, enlightened, non-enlightened, everyone. But we are so adhered to our likings and disliking, our personality. Whenever it is been challenged, we consider it as a challenge to myself. So therefore we are vehemently fighting for that. So we never go into such deeper layers. When you go there, there is no other outside agent coming and disturbing you. Your very uh, protecting system or ego instinct or your conceit or your desire come and blocks you. So whenever someone is reaching to that meditation, they are raising strange kind of questions. Can't help there to answer them and deal it with. 
after uh, giving the question, giving the answer, and one day you have to ask, please yourself go into that state and be there as much as possible. Definitely, the question is going to arise. See the root cause of the question. Either it is due to desire, or due to conceit, or due to egocentric idea. The very day that particular yogi is going to understand his own questions, the whole argument, all debates, Kalavivada Sutta is the one that the Buddha has given that particular answer, where people are arguing and debating and proving this and that, everything is coming out of either desire or conceit or due to egoistic ego ego instinct so whenever you are going to this uh, perception when you go to the subtlety if you are getting agitated if you are going to end up with so much of question that means you have to understand you have so much of desires you have to so much of conceit you have so much of ego centric idea so if you can see it don't try to push it off don't try to see Negativity, don't get discouraged, don't get disheartened, see how it coming comes from. That's for the first time you understand how much of the split mind, how much of the internal contradiction, even if you are sleeping and eating and doing all the kind of things, the internal this uh, unsatisfactoriness, not contented situation not satisfaction, not being satisfied, contented, is the real root cause for the knowledge. His whole knowledge in the world is coming out of that vacuum. That's why you are waiting to, going for the future creations, productivity, because present moment is not enough. What is given is not enough. We need something little more. We are not asking many things, maybe very little, to make the present moment more saturated. The, when, the, when the perception is going to settle down, you will understand the day you understand, or until you understand the present moment is the best moment, you will never reach the bar. If you have any kind of a future plan, if you have any kind of a productivity, all are nothing but desire, the conceit, and egocentric. So therefore the Buddha says, unless otherwise you know this uh, game of the perception, you are battering with throughout Nitya Sanya, Sukha Sanya, Sukha Sanya, Atta Sanya. In this transient world, you are always trying to fix the things with your own labels. Things are fast moving, they are very volatile, but you don't feel happy. So therefore you are fixing label, at least the label is remaining, even the situation is good. And in that also, you always to see the auspicious part of the life, the auspicious thing in the seeing, hearing, step, touching and all the kind of things, otherwise you feel something negative in your personality. And every time you are asking pleasure, and every time you say, the my, me, my, so therefore our perception is sick. It's always it's Nitya Sanya, Sukha Sanya, Sukha Sanya, Atta Sanya. But the Buddha says, as far as it is at the perception level, he can come and help you. But if you are going to take it as a uh, Chitta level, you are going to prove it and you are going to tell others and argue against and tell it that are not impermanent, this is permanent. There is no such auspicious and auspicious kind of thing. We have to only fight for the auspicious. We must not give a chance for the pleasure and the pain. We must fight to have only the pleasure. And I am the partner or my the self and I am the ego life. If you are fighting okay that, that you become, uh, we call that, untreatable. At the Sanya level, you can treatment can happen. But if it's at the Chitta level, if you are fighting and going ahead, that you become uh, untreatable. But when that go up to furthering establishment, you come up to a view, the permanence as a view. I, 
going only for the auspicious part as a view and the pressure seeking game and the pressure as a view and I exist or the supreme being is exist so therefore we can't go beyond that we can't go to the normal perception perception is always governed by the supreme being and my individual being and if you are arguing for that you become slowly slowly untreatable but whenever we go to the views the Buddha even can't help under such circumstances Buddha never take effort because he is so hard and fast it is called case hard once you become case hard even the Buddha can't help you but if you are at the view uh, the chitta level hopeful but if you are at the sanya level uh, that is excusable because we are all in the same world. So therefore at the Sanya level whenever you are going to understand at least if I am uh, undergoing the changes and volatile and changes never mind I have a family, I have my name, I have my bank account, I have my policy and therefore it is going to take care about myself right? You have so much of things to handle. Never mind that is the way the world but understand that the death bit, nothing comes. No, no forward contracts. With the, with the Mara, even the professors can't have a letter telling that please give me two minutes, I will come to school. No. Even the kings, by showing their swords and kind of thing, they can't fight any. When the Mara, the, the last moment happens, you have to go. At that time, your whole thing you prepared is just for a life. In singular, sorry, I can't translate it. It says, Kanan Karakan, Hayati Rakan, Nambu Karakan, Saliti Rakan, Adam Rakan, Hilati Rakan, Meokamakam, Melamin Yakan. All that your calculations and everything is up to the deathbed. They are one word, all the time. So, therefore, if someone is expecting, it's an invariable thing, is the death. If you are not living ex- with that exception, with that acceptance, you will live as an eternal being. So you are up to any arrogance, you are up to any jealous, any one of But if you add that death also into your calculation, you will understand one day all these things, dreams will be awakened into that. There you will see. Whatever you take taken as permanent, no more. Whatever you take taken as the auspicious, no more. Whatever you take taken as the pleasurable, is no more. Whatever you have taken your soul, is no more. So when you are going into the very deep layers of the subtle layers of the perception, you feel like you are dying. You feel like you are going beyond the mind. No, uh, no known thing. So, for a real person with a noble quest, it's an auspicious sign. But those who have so much of worldly plans, worldly hooks, worldly pegs, they find it is something like lost. So, therefore, the sanya, when it is happening, it is going to give a different kind of a, uh, understanding about the world, understanding about your personality understanding about the value systems in the, uh, the world and the communication and how uh, misunderstanding can happen, how the tail carrying can happen, how the lying can uh, be disturbing, how the harsh words come into being, how the frivolous talks are going to give our vanity. So whenever the, this sanya is going to happen, you become dumbbound. That may be the people not happy to go into the deep understanding of the meditation. But if you are keeping on the mindfulness, definitely you are to face with it. But the only thing is, more than the forward step, you will take two steps back. See, because that your identity is lost. You hold the, the what you call the pigs, markings, orientation, everything lost. So therefore, beyond this, you can't go. 
as I say, ego is there, you can't go beyond. You have to drop it here, then only you can go into the pure Dharma. The whole mind made world, and you can understand how the extrasensory perception can going to happen, how the, the mind made world going to happen, how one can walk in the water, how one can listen the other sounds, how one can see far away distant things, everything is possible beyond that. Up to this moment, you are so bogged down in your liking and disliking, your body, your life, everything, so therefore the other sphere becomes invalid, but if you are doing only vipassana, and if you are really vipassana, you will understand all these extrasensory perceptions also, is nothing much, it is just mere mind being. But the Samatha Yogis, they can come up to that level. So they are really, come, when they come up to that level, uh, if they happen to come, uh, they completely going to believe, going to believe upon this matrix. The mind made world. And they, they say, I am talking with my direct experience. You can't see it because you are not meditating, but I am telling it with my direct touch. But that means they have not really mastered this mental factor called the perception. So any person at any time can go into that. When you go there, uh, you feel like uh, believing what is happening. Best way out is let it happen thousand and one times without arriving any conclusion. When only you can understand how omniscient is the Buddha is. How compassionate the Buddha is to tell you, don't just go there and come back. Instead, master it thousand and one times. Asevati bhaveti bhaudi karo. Asevati means just acquaintance with that. Bhaveti means next day you go prepare it. You, you meditate it, go prepare. And then bhaudi karoti, let it happen a thousand and one times. Then only you can understand the magic of the mind or oh, this uh, see through this mirage. So therefore this is a uh, quite a challenging one and uh, if one can see through it, not for the full mastery, at least for the glimpse, see through it, you can understand why the ghosts are in the world, why this so much of love affections and affairs and kind of thing they become uh, mad and how the communication lead this kind of a chaotic situation, whatever the communication is going to happen, if the, the perception is not really recognized, is always destructive, always sending the man. So therefore, once the, you come up to this perception as such, uh, you try your best to keep away from the people. Which is at a wastage of time, because they are always talking about the desire, the conceit and the egoistic, and they do not know. Whatever you are going to say, they would say, uh, if it is so, how can we run the world? Therefore, you mind your own vision, go and put it in the forest, but don't talk to us. That is what happened to the Vedanta Buddha. And when the Bodhidharma was first time going to teach this, going to talk this, he found India is no more a good place. He's been, he decided to go to the China. When you go to the China, people came to know he's a, a kind of a person with understanding. So some people give the tip to the king. So king one day asked him to come. So he going with the chewy beetle and having this ragged rope and all kind of directly went into the, the, the parliament or the court. And king was not happy telling that the, such a the sage is coming. And then the king told, uh, accepted him as a royal guest and told, I have put up 8,400 uh, monasteries and I have given the support for 8,400 monks and all the rest How much merit I have accumulated? Nothing. <laughs> and then the king was not happy. And he asked another question, he wrote, nothing. And ultimately the whole uh, the gathering and everything was quite uh, uneasy. Then the uh, king told, You have no place in my government, get out. So he went to Varma, uh, turned around and went up to the border. 
to walking, 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 never stepping. But there's only one minister in the cabinet came to know this man is not caught up by the perception. He is talking absolutes. But the king can't understand because he's so much of uh, conceit, so much of egoistic idea, so he followed him. And after, as the story goes, he crossed the boundary and there, there was a <coughs> cave and he sit against the wall and observing the wall, Bodhidharma is seven days. It is in full samadhi, but the minister, he can't tolerate it because he has not meditated before, so first day, second day, third day, fourth day, waiting, waiting, waiting to get kind of a ex the teaching for me, but the Bodhidharma is not concerned. He is looking at the wall. So while the king was so desperate, he took a piece of rock and keeping the one arm against the rock and hit it and break his arm with the other hand. It's so much of painful. And he took the broken arm and put in front of the Bodhidharma and told, Believe me, I break my arm to show you my faith. Please teach me. In the Bodhidharma told, Just like your arm, if you can remove your mind, I can teach you. By telling, he became an Arahant according to the Mahayana tradition. So Bodhidharma was uh, self-exiled. From the India as well as from China, because no one wants that kind of teaching. They wanted to have a good pride, a good uh, assets, good egoistic idea. So whenever this perception going to come into being, it devastated. Devastating unless otherwise you have a proper value system, proper view. So therefore, this is not happening at the early part of your meditation. When you are going forward, this will be threatening. That is a very good sign. So whenever someone is upset in the meditation, I am very happy. But I know he or she is now really hitting the target. So this is how it happens. So I don't know whether I am giving some valuable information for you. I am missing you people, but it may be that's all I thought of sharing today for the Dhamma talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it is now already eight o'clock. You have to go. Yes. So we have taken uh, one hour and ten minutes or so. So if you need uh, any kind of a furthering of this, uh, the best person is that Karakuru Dhyanananda. If you read the Divinity Vim in singular papers or in English, uh, the Nibbana, the mind settled, is very seriously tackling this issue. And he has written a very profound book known as Concept and Reality. Uh, it's a very cheap in uh, the Buddhist publication society. I don't think it is available for e-copies, but the Nibbana of the Mind still is 30, 33 sermons, uh, very deep, and uh, yes, given in why he was in his ceremony, these things you can download, and uh, most of the concept and reality thing has been put into these sermons, and he is the best person, I think, uh, for my understanding, to talk on that. Yes, uh, it is not a PhD thesis, but it is more than a PhD thesis, the concept and reality. And then he wrote The Magic of the Mind, that is also explaining about uh, part and partial of it. But the concept and reality is the book, but uh, even the English people need two dictionaries to read the book. This English is so... We don't know from it, how it comes, well, how it happens. I think the magic of the mind is a little easier, but if you go to the Nibbana of the mind still, uh, it will uh, somewhat uh, the day-to-day -day language and uh, singular Nibbana Nibbana. So there you can understand how much it is, uh, even though it is ineffable, uh, even though it is difficult to communicate, uh, he get from the old the, the canonical uh, this thing, and he has a very good mastery of the Sanskrit sources, so he can go to the, uh, the Nagarjuna and other uh, this thing, and he has taken it, but 
he is confining his theory to the Theravada tradition and really given a good explanation. I am happy that I am a disciple of him. Just before coming, I went and pay respect to him. But uh, if you can directly tap the source, uh, if you are really serious, uh, you can learn more than uh, what I have thought in today's talk. What nationality is this one? Sri Lanka. Kathakul Nidhyanatha is a graduate from the Peruzidi University. He has been an assistant lecturer for Pali language and then he renunciated and became a monk. Now it is uh, 10 years older than me and uh, he is a real writing and his talks and kind of thing. No one knows in this audience that people cut the No, that uh, Leonard Lopin came. He has, been, he has been a monk under him for a short period. What we have written is uh, from his ex- more from experience, uh, not just from knowledge uh, uh, or That you have to judge it because these time, these things cannot, you can take it from the text. Text won't give that much of clarity. But the the content is there. We must be happy. About 2,600 years ago, the Buddha has mentioned Pali formulas are there, but no one can interpret it. When you are interpreting, they are interpret with their own views. At Venerable Nyanana, this is really cutting through, and he says how the concept becomes reality, and reality becomes concept, and that is the why the Perception is very important. Sanyanita, Nani, Papancha, Sankha, all the mental proliferation based upon your own uh, labels, your own images. You are never touching the reality. Reality is dead that gone. You are dealing with but your perceptions. So ultimately you are going to prove you are very realistic, you are really down to earth and kind of thing. But you have to sympathize with what to do. So therefore, his writing, whether it is direct at all, I think we have no verifiability. We have no the yardstick to say whether he has uh, understood it or not. But anyway, definitely I can one thing guarantee you will be benefited. Theoretically, it's a very nice explanation. If it gets drawn under the writing on the breath without reading these books, will it not take you to where you should go? I mean that, uh, that uh, without this reading the reading just keep on uh, reading on the breath. That is how before Jnanananda many people enlightened. Before writing his books, many people enlightened without these books. By reading and be mindful. So if you need any theoretical explanation, that is what I am recommending. So Bhak and Patachara, they were not expert on the Sanya Sankha. They are just coming from the sleep and they are ready to give up their desire, they are ready to give up their conceit, they are ready to give up their ego. So, Buddha helps directly. But as far as they are holding our views, they are holding our anchorage, Buddha not, they can even worry. He is not worried about people, those who are so anchored on their views. And he says, it's useless, can't happen. He never worried about. So therefore, we have to ask ourselves, are we ready to the sacrifice our likings and dislikes? Are we ready to give up our views for a better cause, for a better reason, not for just for the sake of a game? Then only something can happen. Bhante, when you said, don't go deep, what do you mean? What, what, what did you really mean? I never mentioned. You said, when you go to the deep players, uh, but not to go very deep, but to go somewhere, and then only you will come to that uh, level you say. Yeah. I, I never meant like that, but you can't go there because you feel bewildered, you feel lost. So therefore, if you go deep, uh, you will you will develop frightening, you develop nausea, you feel uh, uncontrolled, and it is not giving also. Go there and again come back. Next day go there a little bit, come back. The cases of Patachara and Sopaka, there is no such a hindrance. They are directly cut it going there. But they have nothing to lose. In the Patachara state, nothing to lose. Sopaka state, nothing to lose. That Buddha says, be mindful, that's all. 
in our case we are each and every point we are uh, head to karma we are compromising so therefore our progress is very slow but steady good we have a base so that is the rational mind is the block uh, specifically in the consciousness in the, in the perception your rational mind is the main block It is always rationalizing, always I do call this uh, deduce, inference. So nothing go without this thing. You consider it as a knowledge. So there is no chance for the faith, for chance for the uh, rational reflection to take place. So what it means is that if you don't have a value system of your own preconceived already, just uh, have nothing or not pay any attention to that, just accept whatever comes. Uh, as you go on meditating on the breath, then there is no problem. No, every and each person have a value system. It is not the, uh, the block for understanding. And to understand, you are working on not the reality of the value system. That's all you are accepting. Every person has to have a value system. It is accepted. It is very decent, very civilized. But when you understand, you understand. You have to understand myself. I am talking with my value system, but don't try to impose this upon other person. That is the point of communication going on. Sir, I have to. I can't live without my value system. I can't live without my perception. But you have to understand. You are living in your dream. Don't expect other person also to come to the same dream. That is, that is the point we have in the way when Anandam is going to say, don't measure other person from your judgment. You have no rights. He is caught up in a separate thing, eh? so you have to give the complete grant. He has his own value for his this thing, so you have to be pleading, asking, so how can I communicate it? You can't say that you have to understand what I am telling. My self is the correct thing, and I am the person knows and listen. Would they never use that? No political powers, never. He, he try to understand what is the upbringing of the other person. More than what he is talking, what is the what is the true cause? What he is going to say? So with that understanding, I mean full compassion, embracing. So more than analyzing it, that very thing is he. So therefore, this whole mind-to-mind connection, the telepathic understanding, rather than this verbal and the language, this is nothing. So telepathic one is the the superconductivity, direct touch. For that, uh, faith is very important. Telepathic understanding coming from the other group, to the meditation. Telepathic understanding coming from the other group to the meditation. You, it is not a meditation; it is just a means. Telepathic understanding of our nature. We have cut off because of value system. This is the understanding is all over. That is how the mother and the child have started uh, with the mother and the child uh, partiulated. There were no languages, but more and more, and more as they go, the child start hating the mother. And that is the present day civilization. More the child grow, they hate the parents because the communication. At the beginning, it is a naval connection and the mind-to-mind connection. It's a put the same mataya ta niyam putta. It is not by meditation. The mind and the child connection is not by meditation. It's the nature. But we are so smart to break that superconductivity, telling that my value system. But when you are the one with quarter and the, the lost, you are going to incur irreversible. Even the Buddha can't. Because of you, you have you value your value system, and you fight it for the end. This is my human uh, human rights. Who oh, they are going to protest you? You have your own. Now there are some people who say Buddhism, the Buddhist approach is a nihilistic approach. There is nothing. Finally, they don't offer anything. They destroy everything, and uh, finally, there is nothing to offer. But I believe Buddha said. There is something called the unmanifest. I believe I don't know whether I'm right. Somewhere I read it. There is something called the unmanifest. He said he is disciple, and I think there is some reality or something positive about existence, and that existence is worth. It's worth existing in a there is a state of contentment, uh, which uh, ultimately uh, changes. Although it may not be the kind of 
So that is why that uh, ineffability you try to frame some of them. It is not a pain, pleasure, this is not material, but that's one thing existing, not here, there. Yeah. Then you are lost. That is the very thing called duality. There is something existing there. Yeah. Is that, the that is the mistake I am telling. Uh-huh. What is here is the thing, yeah. not there. Yeah. It is not superior. What is here is there. As far as you have something superior over the heaven and kind of thing, you are becoming automatically inferior. Automatically that the present moment is not the supreme. Automatically the present moment is not the content. Buddha says the present moment is the content. And don't search for anything. And as far as the whole world is, if the world is suffering, more and more you get it off, better off. Much of the thing you have is what you call the ignorance. If you drop it off, it off. And the present moment is there even when the body has fallen or dissolved or when you don't have a body existence anymore, still it is there. The present moment is unconditioned. It is not depending upon your body. It is not depending on your mind. It is not depending on your mental proliferation. It is, it is there. It is unmanifested, naturally. But we can't go there because we have the future plan, the carrot. The carrot is there all the time. So people are chasing behind the carrot. So they have the they have the justification, the carrot is the fresh one, why not for the donkey? This is the way we, we derange, we, we, we uh, those, uh, disoriented, we think the, the happiness is there, not here. So much so no one can help. That's a very nice, uh, uh, how to call it, example given. There's a soldier, he has earned a medal, and it is something he has to pay the, on the uh, forehead, uh, go for the palace, when they, when they go there. So he immediately called him, and he is putting up his uh, suit, the uniform. But this is missing. So they was asking the wife, hey, that uh, I have to go quickly to the uh, palace, the, my Nalal Pati Tamagatya? is missing. So wife is telling, why don't you keep it in one place? And daily you are asking this thing, I am in the missing place. Then the, she says, I am telling you, seriously, come and find it for you, otherwise the children would have thrown it away, so where it is not there. So the heat that argument is going. So wife is engaged in something in the kitchen, ultimately become a nuisance, so she come, she come and see, it is already in there. <laughs> And then she knows, being there, but how to tell, because uh, he expects to see, so what he is doing is bring a life-size mirror, mirror <laughs> just show it. <laughs> Otherwise, that he will kill the wife, tell him that you are making joke out of me, that I am in a serious situation to go to the, the palace. So what she do is, so Buddha also, never fight at the situation, just show the mirror, see your image. There yeah, you can understand, you are already with the head back. But if you are searching it, you can't find definitely because it is already there. If it is not there, there you may find something. This is exactly what happens. And uh, do you, have you heard about the Mullah Nasruddin, the, 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 the Sufi master? And it's also a joke. He says that one day, it's a very, just like Andre in Sri Lanka, it's a, it's a joke. And, uh, but he's a, he's a serious joker. <laughs> One day in the, in the dusk, he was searching about uh, under a light post, very seriously. So one of his friends, elderly friends, said, coming in, Bula, what, I, what happened? I see you, you see, my, I lost my keys. <laughs> now it is dark, he's coming out. So he also helped him. Now each and every glass is checked. But the key is not there. Meanwhile, he's asking, was it with the key tag? What color? Oh, he, Mula is giving the, all the examples, answering everything, but they seriously checking every and every glass for the second time, third time. And at the end of the questioning, the person asks, Where did you lost it? I lost it in my room. <laughs> <laughs> so he's asking, You are a hell of a person that I am also engaged. If it is lost in the room, why you are searching it? You know, in my room, no light. Here, <laughs> the light post. <laughs> we are searching the truth in the glittering places, but it is lost in the dark room. 
<laughs> we never go there because what is the use of searching? No light. Better to search under the full light post. Every person go in search of the truth. Never inside. They think that my teacher can grace, give me the grace. So some kind of a magic can going to give me the truth. So therefore they are always expecting Samya. Never think this reality what you experience is the truth of Samya. Do you think, you think that is something to get rid of by drinking this, uh, this strain or Panadol? That truth is the truth. It is a very inferior type. So you have to get rid of that and then expect kind of a truth of suffering from the heaven. But very experience what you in the sitting is the truth of suffering, nothing else. But you complain. You complain, I can't sit because pain. But what I mean, I am meditating to see the truth of suffering. But in the pain, it cannot come. No mosquitoes can come. No sounds can come. No pain can come because I am searching for a very superior one. <laughs> when the Buddha very first at the opening his mouth, first and foremost I am teaching is truth of suffering. But you are fighting vehemently. When I am meditating, the pain cannot come. Disturbance should not come. Irritation should not come. How can I go directly to the truth in the shortest cut without pain? It is such a, such a truth. So whatever may be, this is the only way we have. The trial and error method. So we must be happy with all the kind of sarcastic things. Still we are at least trying. At least we are doing something. Okay, any, any other remarks or questions? I mean, they are waiting to go and that is I... Sorry, I can't do it. And the most important thing I found in my life is except Vipassana, you never unveil this the situation. So always boosting your own ego. By generosity you are boosting your ego. By making precepts and becoming a ritual, a spiritual person, there's a chance of ego. More and more you develop the concentration meditation, a huge chance you to be superior, one up one chip. Only in Vipassana it is being threatened. So many people say nowadays you can't do Vipassana, you have to wait for the next Buddha to come. Not see the Buddha. Because nowadays no good. Because it is hurting you. It is going against the grain. So if they are to sacrifice your things, so therefore the, all the Buddhists, uh, they are the, in escapism. Without going directly to the point, they are hammering around the beating on the bush and telling that I am today is better than yesterday and I am advancing and everything is missing. But the truth is not such a thing. It is here and now. The contentment is here and now. The satisfaction is here and now. If it is not so, never. Sorry, I have, I have, uh, I have my phone book with my you remember? Yeah. The long time ago. It is. After meditation, um, one day later, is my phone getting so bad now? The past three is so bad, but today is much better. I couldn't be yesterday, the day before. It is when I do meditation and some sickness getting bad. No, there is no such a relationship is there. Uh, the, but the some value system is changing and the meditation happens, so therefore your perception, your understanding, these things can go there, but the meditation can't lead it to any kind of a, a physical imbalance. Uh, it can't lead it to any kind of, this thing it can be other way around, understanding and healing. So the, when, I, when I was in Burma, there was an event happened and I was really ruling out one of the requests of the yogis, Yogini and she started crying. And she can't expect that uh, such a thing was vehemently ruling out. And she was crying. And uh, the 
his head was telling that uh, I, uh, you better go and do your mind your business or the use of crime. It's by crime if you can attain Nibbana, definitely it is something to be supported. But I have seen the yogis for 40 years, no one achieved by crime. <laughs> no use. So therefore these uh, things happen. So if you are going to attribute it to the meditation and others, and uh, the, she was telling about something, difficulty in sitting or kind of thing. So Zaira was not happy to accept it. He says, go through it. You have to bulldoze through. So therefore there is no uh, such a negative effect can happen. I also have the same thought problem. I know if I talk too much, irritation. So I have to keep long time resting. Then again it can come. So this is the way you have to economize the resources that we have rather than burning the candle from the both the ends. So when you go beyond 50, 60, you understand, you have to understand, don't accelerate it. Do them in, in a very preservative way or in a conservative way. What do you call Parisham? That's the only way. So when I was at the 40s, when Jnana Rahu was there, and uh, the day, the 10 o'clock in the evening, I was sitting and just before going to say good night, I told Mandi, today is my birthday. Ah, it is your birthday. How many years now? 40. Ah, then mind your business. Now one word, it is twinkling now. Yeah. I thought, no, how can I be? I am still growing. I am still, the 40s is something. So then I went to the Burma and started for the first time, eyesight is going down. And I refused wearing spectacles for five years. Thinking, no, I am not going to give up because my eyes are good. And the, the hearing is slowly, slowly going. And all the other capacities are going. Now slowly, slowly you have to understand. Even though you have a big image thinking that my self is permanent because I am such a person with uh, mindfulness and all the kind of things. How can the uh, health can go? They have their own natural system. Only thing is you have to understand the nature. But instead, if you are going to deny it and for hey, definitely the denial happens. Can't help, but later you have someone there they accept it. So many people are, think that when we are going to do a good thing, meritorial thing, the negative effects are too much. Uh, Mara is going to come and help, uh, disturb like that. But I would say the yes, that is true. The Mara is really disturbed, not only for not only not for Vipassana. For Vipassana, he has no book. Buddha has given a complete antidote, completely the how to call it, immunity. You are directly dealing with him. So there is nothing to camouflage. You understand the Mara. Jati Jara Vyati Marana, the old age. The sickness, then it is nothing special. Anytime it can come. Changing. If you sit in meditation for a while, if you take some things in your things, uh, will that uh, sort of thing in course of time and you keep on doing daily, become less and less? Or is there a time that you can use your community? Or is it something that may never disappear? Never disappear, but your immunity level goes on. So you never complain then. That's all. You should still be able to continue meditation. Complaining is the only thing weakening you. Complaining is the one only thing weakening you. You have to understand to whom we can complain. This is coming our own karmic forces. So why should we worry? Why should we grumble? Accept it. So that so much so your mind becomes wider and become the how to call it? Broad mind. If it is a result of karmic force, then there is a possibility sometimes for some people and it may disappear. It may not be there at all after some time. Right? Is it possible? Disappear? If it is a result of karmic force coming in the form of pain, yeah. there is a possibility that at least for some people the karmic force can get spent out and then the pain may not be there at all. Yes, that if it is possible, if there is no, if there is only a fixed account. But coming force is not a fixed, it's a current account. You are adding more and more, so therefore never you go bankruptcy. 
So daily you are adding karma. Each and every will, each and every volition, each and every motion, everything is a karma. So you are adding more and more. So it's a bank will never go bankruptcy. They show this how to how to get the plan the game. You know the bankers what they do. So when you go there and put hundred rupees, they can give loans twenty times, and one person has to give. And bank is going to five percent. When you are borrowing, it has to be six or nine. And mind you, they are earning twenty times. That is the bank is running. They are making money. And you may be asking that if I am giving you, you have to give five percent. If I am giving you, I have to give six percent. But like that, twenty times he is multiplying. So exactly the way we are karmic process are coming. Each and every moment, any volition means chetanam bhikkhu bhikkhu mangalami. Any volition is karma. Any will, any motivation is karma. But when I do give up in the vipassana path, the time will come and you will be free from volition and activity. And if it is so, yes. if you can appreciate it, you are the great. But you are not appreciating. Kau kau udah ni? Ani katinu? Ani katu mani katu kerja. Ada mani. Ina teruskan cara ni. So that uh, the, the, there are a lot of events in the meditation. Not only the meditation day to day. No volition. You feel lonely. You do, you feel lost. So therefore, you make one or the other volition. You make one or the other wish. One or the other intention. That is how the life become colorful. That is how why life become variety and entertainment. Otherwise, no volition situation not of there. But you never appreciate it. There is no way. Can get spread out, then there will be no transfer liberation at all. For example, I don't think Bhante is uh, accumulating karma now. Yes, that's the problem. Pardon me? If there is no way it can get spread out, then there is no transfer liberation for anybody. No, it is like the ending of the waves in the sea. As on the sea, there are waves are there. It cannot be a sea without waves. There are no no mind. Without karmic process, mind means accumulation of karma and spending of karma. Mind is a friction. So, in spite of this, going in this path, for example, Bhante yourself, or you think you cannot be free from the karmic failure, new karma, and that that way you can never find liberation or freedom from the cycle. Oh, you can, so you can, you can be free from karmic understanding mm-hmm. karma. You can be detached from karma. That is the liberation. That is not ending of karma. Understand the mechanism from karma. That is the secret of the giver, not ending the karma. So at one stage it gets spent, then there are no. No, the karmic forces are there. You are not claiming. You have the pain. You have the misery. Everything you are not. You are not asking. You are not telling. This is me. This is myself. This is my soul. So they come and they go. You are not getting hooked up. You are getting hooked up due to your involution. Due to your intention, so if you have no intention, you just can see the the pain in your pain, just like the neighbor's pain. But you can uh, always make a stage when you see is creating new karma, right? You can see, you can understand the creation, you can understand the cessation. The moment you see the rising of the karma, you understand no certain person is evil. You are the very person. Creating karma, but the thing is, you are failing to see the beginning of karma. You see already developed karma. You see only when it comes up to a perceivable level. Then you see it is given. Maybe something someone is involved. I am not doing something wrong to me. So that is why the Buddha says karma. The sankara. The next point is that we are going to do it. Whenever the sankara, volition, electrical development, see the beginning, no second person. You are the very person. Your ignorance and the desire is the very reason perpetuating. And one is come certain thing up, come up to a certain level, up to the ground level. You don't perceive it. It is underneath. And then only you are going to see how huh, how do you come has come how is that? That means you are too late to earn. Uh, get up in the early morning. You see the bright side sun. You think it is all of a sudden it came? No. If you are early to get up and see it, how you can see the rising of the sun. So that is the next point. Uh, sankara, the Buddha says, you have to understand the beginning of the sankara. Then only you can see the cessation of sankara. 
that does not which indicate you are getting rid of sankara. You understand the beginning, the middle and the end of the sankara that meet the karmic process. Only human can do it. All the other the animals, they have instinct. You can't break it. But the human can go beyond their capacity. That means he can go rational and he can go, how to call it, radical way. That is demanding. That is really costing. But what about the other level, superior? They have no hope because they have no suffering. At the superior level, no suffering. So therefore, they are always in the party. They are always in carnival. But this is the world. They have the suffering and the pressure in the equal level, so you can do experimenting with it. Including the gods, the so-called gods, they themselves, they took and find liberation. Very difficult for them because they have no suffering, no friction. They can do it. They have started from here. You can continue this there. But starting point is here. This is what, therefore, this is a very valuable experiment, uh, the laboratory. The human plane is the best place. But even then, if you are making use, if you are going to make use for your sensuous pleasure, that means you are almost like an animal. And if you are going to, uh, the, how do you call, uh, expect the celestial plane, over there you can't start it. Mm-hmm. You don't feel the necessity. You don't feel the liberation because that you are already in the your good karma. Everything is given, so not necessary to strive. But here is the place. But here also we don't have more than 24 hours. That is the only problem. Everyone has only 24. It is not enough. So if someone can give the 25 hours, then at least we can give one hour for meditation. <laughs> 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 Unlucky enough, everyone has only 24, each 24 is occupied. So, what to do? <laughs> In the scripture called Bhagavad Gita, uh, Vishnu is supposed to be you know, uh, inspired by Vishnu in the form of Narayana, uh, who comes in the form of Krishna and tells Arjuna, gets the teaching of Arjuna. He says, We surrender to me fully and have me as a goal of your life. You will come to a, you will reach me and then there will be no more return to this world and so on, no more suffering for you and so on. I would like to, you know, Bhante's... Uh, no, it is simply you are believing something other than you. That is slavery. Anything you are believing some other force, other second, other moment, the Buddha, they don't believe. You can zoot yourself, you can escape yourself, you can be happy telling that ha, I am fully surrendered to the Krishna, oh God, Krishna, the Krishna Vijnana, then I am liberated. Right? You can get some alcohol. Exactly. <laughs> no, I am not joking. I am not joking. Alcohol is doing the same. You are in a such a world and you can be happy. Then you, your wife only will ask what is happening. So you are talking nonsense. I am playing, I am working whole 24 days. What about taking a shot and be happy with... Uh, that is exactly the mother, Pamada. Apamada is the other one. The mother is the intoxication. Pamada is a, the negligence and delay. So whenever you are going to get intoxication, the delay happens. So therefore, as far as you are believing on the Krishna, Antuna has a reason to say, nothing to worry about, understand the reality. I have already faith, my postman, faith about 100% on the Krishna. Then our game is finished. Uh, am I right, right in thinking that, uh, saying that, does uh, Buddha say, Buddha uh, say that there is something called Vishnu and the uh, these things are real, the so-called Vishnu or the gods, are they real according to Buddha's teaching? Real as far as the, you know, the conventional truth is concerned, real, more than real. That's why people are going behind the Krishna. But as far as the absolute truth is concerned, everything is Sunya. So something about Vishnu exists, I mean, as, as, an entity. as far as you are in the conventional truth, yes. Like uh, people existing around us, individuals yeah. like that. Yeah. Just like that, uh, we have it is yellow color. But if you go and ask a dog, which is color blind, which is yellow or green, <laughs> <laughs> but you, can you tell him that it is not green? No, because we have in our convention, so we know it is green. 
And if you go and ask the dog, it's a color blind, it will ask you, what is these people are talking about? <laughs> Something like this is different dimensions. That can happen. That we are living with our, our perception, our value system, and through that value system, yes. But if your paradigm is shifted, no way. You don't know what is happening because you are uh, with the computers and everything, if the electromagnetic field is going to change, all collapse. Then again you have to start one, two, three, four, five. Again go back to the counting. As far as the electromagnetic field is there, these all systems is working. You know what happened when the, the millennium changed, the computer is going to play hell. So ultimately they sort it out exactly the same thing. But the teaching of the Buddha is not depending on this conventional truth. It is, it is, of course, in the convention also you can understand it, but it is going to the absolute. Exactly, it is uh, things really as they are. The reality is reality. So, therefore, uh, he never allowed that kind of a believing a certain superior power, uh, something uh, valuable beyond this moment. No. These are late exities. But he, he mentioned the, anything, if at all, he and aware. Here, now I am. I am. Yeah, here, now I am. That is the starting point. Beyond that, everything is a fallacy. Does the word Jehovah mean I am? Does it mean that? Yeah. Neta mama neto hamashvi nameso atta. That is the way the, the Pali goes. I don't know that term. It's very interesting to uh, read the other scriptures and other belief system, but I am not telling in the, the inferior way uh, how these things happen. Without that, we can't understand the Buddha's teaching of Anicca Dukkhanatha. From Anicca Dukkhanatha, in terms of Anicca Dukkhanatha, you can't understand it. But to understand it is in the Nietzsche Sanya, then only the Buddha's antithesis of Anicca you can understand. So, you first time and foremost, you have to realize you are Nietzsche Sanya, you are a the permanent notion, your permanent notion and your pleasure-seeking part, your egoistic idea, otherwise the Dhamma won't work. If you are going to say, I am pure, I am always Itanicca and I am always Dukkha, that means you are camouflaging yourself. First you have to quantify the amount of ignorance, the amount of misunderstanding within yourself. No otherwise, otherwise you diagnose yourself you can't prescribe anything. Very important thing is diagnosing yourself, understanding who am I, understanding your traits. For that to be associating each other to get a good picture from your reflectors you are going to offer each other. Okay, now we are reaching 8.30, 8.40. Hope there are no more any other questions or statements. So that means we are uh, summing up the day a little earlier than today. We started 45 minutes earlier. And the uh, Dhamma talk itself. One question, but may not be possible to do it in day. We can do it in a day. What is the what is the universe? Uh, what is the meaning of this? And how did it all arise? And how did come to be the way it is. Mm -hmm. The universe and the appear, the people, the individuals, the species. And why, how did the universe come to be? And due, what due, to, due to individual's ignorance. Due to your ignorance only this universe comes, but you see that you are. If you see existing universe, that means your ignorance is projecting it. That is your universe. But if you are going to say exactly the same universe that I am also going to see, that is the ignorance. Mind you, I am seeing my own dream, due to my ignorance. You see your own world, due to your ignorance, so the day you understand it, you see how understand the, how difficult the complication is. But you see that you are, it has been proved by the quantum physics. Then only people came to know that what is Buddha telling is something perceivable, something empirical. In the quantum physics, they say that uh, the energy wave collapse, Schrodinger energy wave collapse, and go into matter whenever the consciousness go and strike. Otherwise, 
their energies. Without the interact of the consciousness, the energy cannot be a matter. Even they have recognized and kept it for 200 to a number of years without expressing it because this was not the Newton talk about. They talk about something existing matter. It had the shape and the matter. But the sword in general came to know matter become energy become matter due to you see you are your consciousness. If your consciousness is not interacting, they are not becoming a matter. They are energies. So Buddha told, Yena Yena Yimanyati Tato Tanmoti Anyata, Buddha told, whatever you are going to think about something due to that very thinking, that become another one. You become another person. So therefore that uh, ignorance is the beginning of this universe. When the ignorance goes, even the universe is there, it is not a problem for you. There. You are not taking upon your head that you are not going to take the universal problem into your head thinking that let the universe to sort out it. <laughs> you mind your own business. Did you say that uh, you become whatever you want to be? No. That already existing is what you are. But you see what you are. Wherever you go, there you are. But you hear that you are. That is the answer. That there are some books written on on the scientific basis, and that is exactly what the Buddha says. When your mind becomes beautiful, your low world is very beautiful. If your mind is very ugly, hatred, the world appears hatred. No other, no other factor. Buddha said that. Buddha said. It's a, it's a mano bhupaka, mano sitta, mano maya. Mind is a mora, it's a made up of mind. So that's why he mentioned that uh, whatever the thing you are doing outside, as far as mind is not cultured, uh, no much of a direct impact. Even the outside is not organized, if the mind is cultured, you are safe. That is the thing you have to give the priority. So far, the science failed to understand the mind. It, so it thought, thought the mind as a mystic, so therefore they went for the empiricism, the materiality, extrovert. But now, anyway, the science itself is coming back to the mind. They understand without that, all what they are talking about is half truth. Okay. So that uh, today also we are going to recite the stanza and then share the merits with the all the seen and unseen beings help organize this and uh, share with our all the relatives and the dear and near ones and straightening our objective and uh, reminding again and again our objectives so that we may reach it with the shortest cut out of the merits we have accumulated throughout these days. So we are going to resign there. Uh, <laughs> Akasatajumata deva naga maitika Punyantan anumodita tirangakan to Pasana Akasatajumata deva naga maitika Punyantan anumodita tirangakan to Desana Akasatajumata deva naga maitika Punyantan anumodita tirangakan to Ampara Idango yati nango tu sukita hontu nyati yo. Idango yati nango tu sukita hontu nyati yo. Idango yati nango tu sukita hontu nyati yo. Imina kunya kamene mami bale samadhu satan samadhu ho tu yaveni bane patia. Ibina punya kami ne mami bade samadhu 
satan samadamo hotu ya anipan patya nibida punya karmene mami bal samadamo satan samadamo hotu ya anipan patya sadu sadu Thank <laughs> you.